Good morning, all, and thanks for joining. We'll just give it one minute uh, for the rest of the people to jump on, and then we'll kick off. All right, let's get started. So thank you for joining us today on this morning's webinar with Cambium Networks. This morning, I'm joined by Roy, Peter, and David from the Cambium team. They're gonna spend the next hour taking us through the following topics. Roy's gonna provide a Wi-Fi 6 technology update and talk about what makes it better. Roy's also going to talk about how to choose the right switch when thinking about a Wi-Fi 6 deployment. David's then going to give us a quick demonstration of PBA or policy-based automation. And as you'll see from this demonstration, this is a quick and easy way to configure and deploy your switches. We're then going to hear from Peter around a number of vertical specific partner programs on offer from Cambium and also how Cambium are supporting their partners both pre and post sales with a number of tools available. We're then gonna finish with some Q&A. So if you guys do have questions, please put them in the chat and we will get to those at the end. And remember guys, all the attendees today that stay on for the webinar, will be receiving a $25 Uber Eats voucher to go and grab some lunch. Uh, so with that, I will hand over to Roy to get us started. I've got it, Matt. All good. Good uh, morning, everyone. As Matt said, my name is Roy Wittert. I'm based down in Melbourne uh, with Cambium Networks. Um, Cambium Networks has been around um, since 2011. We spun out of Motorola a couple of years ago. It's almost two years to the date. We acquired uh, the Zurus business out of Riverbed. Um, and we have this focus around broad wireless fabric of products, uh, recently introduced 60 gigahertz products to give us a giga, gigabit wireless uh, portfolio across Wi-Fi 6 and fixed wireless. I'll be talking about that. Lots of nodes shipped and listed uh, on the NASDAQ. As I said, we have a, a wireless fabric uh, solution set. We provide connectivity for long range microwave, uh, last mile remote access with service providers, connectivity into, into the industrial mining, oil and gas markets. Um, but today I'm gonna to be focusing on this orange area that I've circled the intelligent edge. What is Wi-Fi 6, why is it important? The switching fabric and the management uh, of those. Dave will talk about some of those differentiations of the switching fabric and then uh, we'll also highlight some of our gigabit wireless capabilities. So looking at our enterprise for portfolio that has continued to develop over the last couple of years since we acquired the Zeris business, we have our, our cloud management applications. I'm going to talk a little bit about those. Matt's going to slot me in uh, just before Peter presents uh, again, wasn't quite in the agenda. Uh, we'll talk about CN Maestro, CN Maestro X, and, and our XMS uh, cloud portfolio that came across from uh, from uh, from Zurus. Uh, very much part of our overall portfolio, managing our Wi-Fi AEPs. I'm going to focus today on the Wi-Fi 6, but we've also got our E-series, indoor and outdoor access points, and our legacy uh, Zurus APs, well known for their high density capabilities and software defined. Uh, uh, capabilities as well. Uh, we'll talk about our switching products. Um, I grew up in, in the marketplace many years ago with a company called Synoptics when switches were introduced, um, but it's really exciting to talk about our switches today and the differentiator that they provide in the marketplace. And David's uh, going to talk about those. Key to note that the switching fabric that we have, the POE switches, 
are all able to be cloud managed out of CN Maestro or XMS. So Wi-Fi 6, why should you care and why is it different? Well, firstly, we know that Wi-Fi continues to grow uh, and expand and the use of data continues to grow and expand. Internet users growing, the amount of devices per capita uh, connected, the average speeds uh, that are connected. I speak to a lot of our wireless service provider partners and how they've gone from 100 and 200 megabit per second backbones to multi gigabit backbones. So we know that data needs are, are, are growing tremendously and the average traffic per capita is growing. So we're all looking for better connectivity uh, and better Wi Fi. I don't know about you guys, but I watched the entire Olympics, not on, on my free to air TV, but on my smart device and streamed. Uh, every night on Channel 7. It was absolutely fantastic. So that's the kind of trend that we're seeing. Now, Wi-Fi has been around for a while, 20 plus years. Um, it originally came out to provided basic connectivity in 2.4, and we saw that evolution around BG and then 11N, which provided a significant uh, uh, difference to us in the marketplace. And then about five or six years ago, 11AC came along and we started to see the implementation of networks that combined uh, 2.4 and 5 gig, and we got to see broader channels and better performance. Um, but right, right now we're seeing this massive increase in the number of devices that are being connected to the network, um, to, uh, virtual reality type devices in education, IoT devices, people requiring faster throughput, and hence much better network efficiency because there's still a limited amount of bandwidth. That may change soon. We might get that extended six gigahertz band in the not too distant future. And also, because of all these devices connecting, we need better uh, battery life. So, if we look around how Wi Fi is developed and real channels, 11N gave us usable around 150 meg, and then AC in a 40 meg channel gave us usable bandwidth of about 250 meg. But 11AX Wi Fi 6 is actually able to give us. A real data throughput in 80 megahertz channels of two and a half gig. And we've had that tested by one of our customers down here in Melbourne who trialed one of our access points and absolutely got two and a half gig uh, of throughput and capability. And that lends us then to the discussion around our switching products because no longer is it then suitable to implement Wi Fi 6, but limited with a gigabit switch uh, and switching fabric. So if you look at the, t the, the heading here, high capacity deterministic networking model, this is what makes Wi-Fi 6 different from the traditional Wi-Fi 11N, 11AC. Wi-Fi traditionally utilized the access point that broadcast carrier sense, multiple access. It was random, it was non-deterministic, it was best effort. Yeah, it would broadcast, it would back off for a period of time if there were collisions. Uh, and it worked, and it worked pretty well. But this new 11AX technology now introduces the ability of the access point to provide control and to deliver the modulation using multi-user OFDMA and also using multi-user MIMO, which gives us much better packet efficiency and much smaller. I'll talk about that. We get the ability to utilize the available spectrum in a much more effective way. Uh, being able to broadcast simultaneously in the same channel to different devices, color coding, better battery life, better modulation rates, higher capacities, because we've got these more intelligent access points that can have up to eight by eight antennas. So four simultaneous two by two MIMO streams, extended range capabilities, all of it. So what do I mean by OFDMA? OFDMA is a modulation mechanism. And what it does, if you think about the way it worked before, we used to transmit packets, but one size fits all. So if I had a, a small hat and I needed to transmit it, I'd still put it in a big box and it, got and it got transmitted, then there was a lot of waste of available resource. The OFDMA modulation mechanism can break down the resource units to as small as two uh, megahertz uh, by, um, uh, components. And then you can allocate those res resource units into a packet over time in a much more cost-effective way. So you get much better latency, much better use of the available resources. Um, these are ideal for small packet, voice over wireless LAN, IoT, always on connected devices, and will be really useful 
in, in, in education, in, in stadium type of environments. We also then see the ability to transmit and modulate called multi-user MIMO. So we know MIMO is two by two, you're transmitting two streams and receiving two streams, but multi-user being able to do that to multiple devices at the same time, hence more trucks on the road providing greater amount of bandwidth throughputs, higher capacity, higher bit rates, and great for streaming. So in a classroom environment, when all the students are streaming media from some remote um, location, you're gonna get a much better outcome uh, from those. And also there are, we're able to, and the technology is able to do it in a bi-directional way. So not only uh, if you have Wi-Fi 6 devices, are you able to transmit and modulate OFDM in the down path, but also in the up path, which also increases the overall signal to noise ratio and hence improves range. And then on the MUMIMA side, being able to do that, you can transmit down to multiple devices, up to four simultaneously, but also have them transmitting uh, back uh, to the access points, so ideal for high speed applications. So this bi-directional performance really improves the way that we're able to use the network and get performance uh, out of the network. We also continue to have the value of software defined radios. So our higher end XV3, three radio access point has got eight by eight or eight antenna patterns. It's got one 2.4, but it can be an eight by eight in five gigahertz. We start off with two four by fours. If you're just working in a, in a normal legacy environment, you don't have a lot of Wi-Fi six devices. But as you migrate to greater density of Wi-Fi 6 devices and want to get the value, more value of multi-user OFDMA and multi-user MIMO, you turn those two 4x4 four four, 5 gigahertz radios into a single 8x8, and that's software defined. So some nice intelligence uh, sitting behind that. Now the question you're going to ask is, do I really get value of rolling out Wi-Fi 6 when most of my clients today are still Wi-Fi 5? So we have an environment where we do these testing, where we do, do, do this testing, and I'll show you that picture shortly. But we were able to demonstrate a 40% performance improvement with Wi-Fi to five devices on Wi-Fi 6 APs versus Wi-Fi 5 APs. So you're gonna get a better performance. And why? Because you've got better receive capabilities in the access point, especially on the XP3 with eight by eight. You've got better technology, improved driver performance, better modulation capabilities. So there will be an increase. But then what happens, as we add Wi-Fi 6 devices, we're going to see a significant performance increase versus Wi-Fi 5, so over 135%. And that's validated here in our labs as well, this 2.5 gig throughput uh, capability on our XV3-8 uh, AP. Um, and um, we have two Wi-Fi 6 products in the market at the moment. We have a 2x2, two two, the XV2-2, and we have our 8x8, um, eight our XV3-8, uh, which have been selling for um, over a year now. They, they're well deployed and providing great performance in multiple uh, locations, whether it be education, large public venues, hospitality uh, in, environments as well. Excitingly, we've got a brand new outdoor access point coming. That's our new XV2-2T AP. It's been announced to the channel. The public announcement's only coming in September. Um, we did some early beta trials pre-Olympics with the Olympic team in Hawaii. We were able to get fantastic range and throughput. So 350 meters, having devices commuting at over 200 megabits per second. It's, it's, a, it's a very exciting outdoor product uh, that'll be part of our portfolio. We also make sure that we have able to articulate for the legacy environment, for those of you that have used successfully the Xeris products and now want to migrate to Wi-Fi 6. What is the plan? Um, soon, um, Peter Davison is going to talk about our trade-up program um, and how we enable this to happen easily. But there's a mapping model from the existing XR series to XV2s or XV3s. Um, and then towards the end of the year, we'll introduce our dual radio, single 2.4, one 4x4, four four, 5 gigahertz radio, our mid-range AP, which will uh, again map across. And then early next year, we'll introduce 
high density uh, radios, five different radios, uh, consistent with the, the high density capabilities that we bring brought across from Zurich, and that'll be introduced to the portfolio in Wi-Fi 6 as well, and ideal for very large uh, public venues. So this is the test environment uh, that we have in Thousand Oaks in California, over 200 uh, PCs for doing the testing. We have a classroom environment for doing those tests. We've really taken Wi-Fi 6 devices, ours and others, and beaten them up with lots of clients connected um, to show that the Cambium product really performs effectively. Uh, we get good results, so you would say, hey, that's great, your lab, your environment, really subjective. Um, but we've actually gone out um, and, 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 and got this validated by our third party, the Tolly Report. This is an interesting one uh, across the different um, 8x8 radios, so we've used equivalent competitive products. You can see the Ruckus product could only, couldn't get to the 200 clients, could only get to 103, but overall the Cambium performance was significantly better. Um, and then we got Tolly to validate those, and you guys can go and download um, that Tolly report um, and see that overall performance, not only from on our trial radio, but also on our dual radio versus the competitive products mentioned. We've got a single 4x4 coming uh, as well. Um, and then we demonstrate in that report what Tolly signs off is great price performance. Obviously, that's going to be subjective based on different discounting models in the marketplace, um, and then excellent overall total cost of ownership. And Peter's going to talk about a TCO tool that we have that you can use to do comparative uh, um, um, evaluations of our solutions uh, versus others. But really what we're saying is no real premium for Wi-Fi 6. You're able to acquire an XV3-8 at the same price as you were able to or still able to acquire uh, an XD2240 product as an example. Um, so the exciting uh, addition to the portfolio has obviously been our PoE switches that have been gaining popularity in the marketplace, the 8 port, the 24 port, 48 port, but importantly I'm going to talk about our 16 port multi-gig switch and then David's going to talk about uh, the key feature of our policy-based automation. But this multi-gig switch becomes really important. Remember that I talk, spoke about a Wi-Fi 6 AP being able to do two and a half gig. In fact, our two by two product can exceed a gig of capacity. It's roughly on the borderline of being able to do more, but it can do more than a gig. You don't want to constrain it necessarily by a one gig switch. So we've got these six two and a half gig ports. We've obviously got eight ports for printers and other devices. And then you've got fiber, two fiber up ports, uh, SFP plus ports, which are pretty exciting. So this little Swiss army knife edge a uh, device for providing connectivity and getting the best out of a gigabit a capacity network. Now, policy-based automation creates a massive differentiator in terms of security, simplicity, and total, total cost of ownership. And David is gonna demonstrate that to us and you'll see how you can set up the profiles and how they can automatically be cleaned. So all, all ports are treated equal, uh, how simple it is to do. You'll see that in the demo and then overall total cost of ownership. Well. If you don't have to spend hours and hours at a wiring closet knowing which and labeling which devices to plug into which port and making sure you don't have errors or in remote deployments, making sure the installers have got notes and where to plug into what, you're going to have a huge overall cost from an operational perspective and, and, and time consuming um, manual configuration changes. So the value you get out of this overall solution is Wi-Fi 6 multi-gig capabilities, proof performance, explain that. Single pane of glass cloud management, whether it be CN Maestro XMS, I'll talk a little bit more about those uh, coming up. The multi gig switch, and then tying that together with policy based uh, automation, which makes a real difference because it's kind of when we started out, CN Matrix, Cambium Networks got Ethernet switches. I'm like deja vu. I, I started in vendor land and the industry selling uh, synoptics switches. It was pretty exciting when we used to say to people, you can transmit ethernet over twisted pair and it doesn't have to be coax cable and then a switch is a switch but these switches are just a little bit more clever with the policy based automation and we hope to show that uh, to you. So Wi-Fi 6 is a little bit different, AX technology makes it deterministic, the AP dynamically allocates resources, operates in the uplink and the downlink to get better 
performance, lower latency, higher throughput. And then our policy-based automation with multi-gig switches ties this all together to make a cohesive uh, and, and, and solid uh, environment from a productivity uh, perspective. So I'm going to stop presenting now and we're going to hand over to David, who is going to um, talk to us about policy-based uh, automation. Thanks, Roy. Hi, everyone. Uh, make myself a presenter. And then I can show my screen. Okay. That's great. We can see it, Dave. Okay. Can you guys see? Both the screens. Can you guys see this screen? Now we're seeing the wrong one. Oh, okay. Now we're seeing the correct one. Oh, okay. Barrels okay. working with two screens, right? Okay. So, welcome again. Thank you, Roy. Uh, so let me walk you guys through the XMS demo on PDA. So first of all, this is going to be a demo on XMS, as you can see. And the first things first, things first obviously, we log in into our XMS instance, right? We don't have to do anything else more than just to log in into our system. And from there, most of you are very familiar with this uh, with this screen, the dashboard, where you can see all the metrics, statistics, etc. from our devices. Currently and, and clearly what I'm showing you now is just a demo account that I have. There is not much here, but for the demo purposes, it's gonna help and it's gonna work just because um, I wanna obviously show you how easy it is to configure your policy based automation. Now I want to also make clear that Policy-based automation will help us uh, to tackle the ongoing changes for our network, right? So when we configure, uh, when we configure or deploy switches, access points on any network, we basically have two types of configurations. The initial deployment, which is our static predefined configuration, and also or after our devices are on the network and are already working, let's say the backbone switches, we at the edge of the network, we're going to uh, constantly, more or less, we're going to have changes, constant changes, such as adding new cameras, adding access points, void uh, devices, et cetera, et cetera. So PVA is precisely to tackle this type of dynamic changes that will come throughout with time into the network. Okay? So let's have a look. XMS, uh, pretty simple. I'm going to create a profile. Most of you will be very familiar with this. Uh, and this will be for my um, initial deployment, right? Even without having my devices on site, I can predefine and static configuration. So showing you very basic how we do this and also to show you clearly uh, the power of, of, of the cloud zero touch configuration. Networking using the HTTP or the static IP address. I can use this profile from my access points, but for today's presentation of PVA, I want to use this for PVA. Now talking about a static deployment or initial deployment, I can create a template, right, which previously I configured, and I'm using the precisely the multi gigabit switch that we have, and I pre-configure something very simple. Uh, app links going to the internet, going to a router, going to the storage, etc., etc. So this is very static. As soon as the device gets on site, it gets this configuration. Now, what happened later? I can save this. So as soon as the device is inside, it will get pushed this configuration. What happened later if I want to dynamically change my power configuration? So what we used to have, 
in the classic way of doing things was to label my switch. Think about bring me for switch and label every single core uh, using the devices that I wanted to connect into it. So I used to have physically labeling five to 12 or cameras, 13 to 24 or workstations and so on and so forth. That obviously very, very, um, in, in, an, in an installation and deployment where you have so many people touching these devices and connecting, that obviously create a lot of problems and challenges, right? With policy-based automation, we want to avoid all of that, okay? Because what we want to do is basically automate that process. Very simple, we go into policies within the actual profile and we just create a new policy. In this case, we can give it a, a name. The thing that we are trying to connect access points. So I'm going to call it PBA um, what? Okay. It could be anything you want, realistic, or just what? Now, <clears throat> I can also create templates for later on use, but one thing, just let's just, just create a piece of it. So I give it a name, a nice touch here. We just select an icon. So I can, we are very visual. So as long as I see the icon, I know what I'm referring to. And then I can add a rule. So the policy based automation works by um, identifying the device I connect into the switch by a LDP protocol. Well, so in the LDP protocol, we have different types of fields that the switch will recognize. So system, names, chassis, or ID, etc. etc. We can also even do Mac OUI, which is the vendor OUI of the device or the MAC address, the six first uh, digits of the vendor. In my case, I'm going to use Cambium. I can even use five zeros if I want to, to have actually access points from, from zeros, but I can use Cambium as an example here. Yeah. So if I use Cambium and I find the OUI, I can, let's say, select that one. Obviously, I will know if I have 10, 20 switches, which ones are the first digits of my of my band, right? The best it paste it there on the roll, add it, and then I can give it certain type of um, classification, let's say. So I, I want to have this port as an access, as an, as an access point, or maybe as a trunk, because I want to have more than one VLAN going through that port. For instance, the staff, guest, um, students, things like that. So I can do trunk, I can do and VLANs, which I obviously have pre-designed. I can also give certain priority, and I can also have POS or trusted, or trusted for best table or high priority. And I can save this, right? That's pretty much it. As soon as I connect that device coming from the vendor, which in this case is Cambium, the switch which has been assigned to this policy, this profile, will recognize that device and it will add this type of um, policies into them. Now, that's very automatic. That's um, very simple to produce. And I can do that for different other, other type of devices. I create a template, and I, as I mentioned before, I can create templates for it. Let's say if I want to connect printers. So I can do the same in, this, in the case of a printer in my requirement to be allocated into a specific VLAN. So I just select access as a port type. I just select the VLAN that I want. And, and find them. Um, in this case, I just go to 30 and I select um, any other rule type, any other um, option that I want. In this case, it's a canon. Let, let's say, right? So this applies globally to not only one switch, but all of the switches that are assigned to this specific profile. And it's not only that. So we treat every single port as equal. Right? But at the same time, as soon as I disconnect this device from the port, the mechanics behind the policy-based automation will 
clean that configuration. So I don't have that error or that um, unsecured level of uh, someone trying to connect into this port directly and probably gaining access into a critical mission uh, VLA, for instance. So that particular um, VLA configuration is not going to stay there if the device is not connected into that specific port. So I'm using, so the benefits are absolutely massive because I'm automating this process, but I'm also giving a, a security layer on top of, of, of the configuration. Um, the IT required is quite minimal because I can't redefine all of these. Um, so that, that, that's it, that's PBA. Now that we are here also, I can also show you a little bit about policy, um, sorry, application control. Just remember that we have application control at the edge of the access points where I can create easily um, a policy into the SSID for a policy, a global policy into my access points to allow or uh, block certain type of traffic. But not only that, I can prioritize. So something that COVID probably has tell us nowadays is that video conferencing or Teams or Zoom, they have to be prioritized, right? For instance, what we're doing today, we don't want this to go or stop at any time when we have a lot of traffic going into our networks. So something that we can use in, 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 in the Exynet system is to prioritize certain applications. In our case, I can prioritize, for this example, I can prioritize things. I can give it a specific QS parameter, right? And so I can create this rule, apply it to my access points, apply it to my SSDs, and everything prioritized. So I, I can do that directly from the edge. I'm not using my switches, I'm not using my router or my firewalls. I can do this directly from my from the cloud and from my access points. So there you have it, that's um, all. Of course, if you have questions, please, please, let's let's talk about that later. Uh, okay, that's great, thank you. So back to Roy, I believe. Oh, back to Pierre. No, back to back to Roy. I'm going to do a quick little yeah. overview of our cloud management options. Um, David sh just showed us um, really effectively. Oops, David really showed us effectively how XMS can be used to apply policies, both for the switches PBA, but also to um, apply policy um, of the Wi-Fi six APs at at the edge. Uh, and cloud management is obviously really, whoops, really key and important. So we've seen that evolving over the years, how important it is to be able to use uh, cloud. Um, people are putting, you guys are putting applications into data centers and customers are moving uh, their data environments into cloud-based, but managing the Wi-Fi environment out of cloud is, is, is key. We've got a number of customers, still early customers in the XMS world that are on enterprise. People talk about the program to migrate to cloud, but the simplicity it provides, the reduced total cost of ownership and ease of upgrading and maintaining the environment is, 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 is important. We've got a number of cloud applications that allow you to manage your Wi-Fi 6 and, uh, and switch environments. Um, we have a little application called Swift that runs on a smartphone, iOS or Android. Um, simply, if you're doing small little deployments of one or two APs and one switch, uh, you don't want to use a, a larger cloud application. Uh, you can simply download this free application. It allows you to onboard, name the network and, and manage the devices. We have CN Maestro Essentials, which is a subscription free service, allows you to get great visibility of the Wi-Fi APs and switches. It'll also manage our fixed wireless uh, infrastructure that's uh, ideal for simple networks, even larger ones, no subscription required. And then we move into our world of subscription with 
recently introduced CN Maestro X, which took the value of CN Maestro, fixed wireless enterprise device connectivity, but introduced important features for managed service providers, multi-tenanting, storage of data for 24 months, adding 24 by seven support to, to the environment uh, as, as well. So some really great and vast enhanced features. And then uh, our, what we would call top of the range XMS uh, product, which David just demonstrated, available in enterprise and cloud. Um, MSP features with command center, ideal for large networks, but importantly, with the functionality of application management and control. So not only do you have policy-based automation, which is available across CN Maestro and XMS, but we also add the value of edge application management and control, and also an advanced suite of fantastic guest access capabilities with EasyPass. I'll talk a little bit about those as well. So both CN Maestro X and XMS Cloud are subscription-based, um, but there's great tools in, 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 in free non-subscription cloud management within CN Maestro Essentials and within the Swift application as well. Policy-based application is, is a fantastic tool in terms of prioritization, especially in what we're seeing with the use of Wi-Fi networks today uh, with, uh, with Zoom or team-based applications. You want to be able to prioritize traffic uh, effectively, limit certain traffic, just monitor traffic with thousands and thousands of applications uh, that are there. And sometimes there'll be a centralized firewall policy there, but it's also quite useful. We have a school, for example, in WA that says, during the certain time of the day, I don't want these iPhones or, 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 or Android smart devices to connect to the network. So you set a policy to be able to allow that to happen or not happen. Um, EasyPass provides a great set of different suites for creating customized, easy to set up onboarding, uh, onboarding portals, guest access portals. Um, with some key features around reducing costs, uh, having IoT, IoT devices connect easily uh, into the network. Um, simply as David demonstrated, uh, setting up, you click either, in this case on EasyPass, uh, you create a new portal, and then you get the selection of eight different types of portals, whether it be self-registration, just one click through, yes, accept the terms, guest ambassador, have someone say, no, no, I'll, I'll allow this person, onto my Wi-Fi network, voucher-based services, something we do quite nicely within CN Maestro as well, CN Maestro X, being able to create a nice portal and have vouchers printed off and give people those for access into the network if you want to monetize it in certain ways. But then importantly, we've got Google Login and Microsoft Azure uh, integration. So Google Suite, G Suite for education, Microsoft Azure for many environments, single sign-on with SAML integrated into that environment. It's uh, really fantastic. Uh, and then simple onboarding or personalized Wi-Fi capabilities. But this onboarding with PSK, uh, dynamic pre-shared keys, ideal for IoT uh, devices uh, as well. One of our key differentiators is Cambium, because otherwise Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi and switches are switches, is our end-to-end -end gigabit wireless fabric. And uh, this ability to have gigabit switching cloud-based management across that fabric, but also fixed wireless capability, being able to on a campus have a gigabit connection with 60 gig is uh, 60 gigahertz technology is one of those areas of differentiation for us. So this end-to-end -end wireless fabric with Wi-Fi backhaul, CCTV backhaul, integrated connectivity, these smart switches that if you're inside, well, I will also identify CCTV cameras, IP phones, simple cloud management, license-free options, high performance solutions. We've demonstrated those and shown the, the performance results of our Wi-Fi AP. Single sign-on integration with Microsoft Azure and Google Suite and the overall easy pass onboarding application capabilities. Application intelligence through application management, the edge intelligent architecture and a best in class. Uh, total cost of uh, ownership, which is pretty important. So I'm going to hand over to um, my colleague, uh, Peter Davison, who joined the team um, nearly four weeks ago. And, uh, Pete brings a wealth of experience with him in the, in the wireless industry. He really understands and knows our technology. He's worked for Zurich, Riverbed, and, and Aerohive, 
Um, so Pete, over to you. Thanks, Roy. Uh, let's bring up my presentation now. So just want to talk to about our sales tools. Hang on, I'll get this going. Have you got the screen, Roy? Uh, no, not yet. No. How do we get control? Oh, I share my screen. Got it now. Okay. You got it now? Yep. Yep. Great. Okay, here today just to talk to you about sales tools. And I've just got to find my screen now. It's down at the bottom, you want to click on that presentation. I know. Down at... Rather than yeah. the top one works better. That's it, perfect. Okay, so what we want to go through is the plethora of sales tools available for you at Cambium Networks to help it make it easy for you basically to sell our solutions. Hopefully you're all partners, uh, so you're quite well aware of the, the channel partner portal. Uh, if not, please go to cambiumnetworks.com, hit partner and then register. Uh, what these tools do, they give you the ability to basically present, design, quote, propose and then let a customer evaluate the solutions we provide for you. Great things for presentation are cloud demonstrations and our TCO profile that Roy, Roy talked about before and I'll go through more. And then you've got that, all of the design aspects. We've got Wi-Fi designer and a link planner, a whole lot of others that let you to put the design together. And then we have the configurators. Again, from the partner portal, click configurator. It lets you build your bill of materials and then you can combine all of these together you know, in Wi-Fi configurator, Wi-Fi designer and profiler to prevent to your customer. And then before the sale or during the sale, you can do an evaluation of the solution to the customer. Most effective way to demonstrate all these to your customer is via a live demo or using videos and scripts that are all available on the partner portal. Most effective one is XMS Cloud. You can do it interactive. Uh, you can use the link at the bottom of the page or you go to the partner portal uh, channel.cambionetworks.com, type in XMS Cloud Demo and it'll follow up the link there. There's script pages and handouts you can present with those as well. Makes it very easy to do that for you. Onto the design, uh, again, easiest way to access these is channel.cambionetworks.com, type in software tools and they'll bring up all of our link planners. Wi-Fi Designer, it's a very easy to use it's free online design tool, so you go on, register, uh, type in your email, go in, download your floor plan, draw on your walls, place your APs, covers all of the APs, uh, indoor and outdoor. Uh, in the end, when you're finished, you click a button, it'll send you an email. That email will give you heat maps and a bill of materials. Um, so you can go on and design the solution from there. Other one is the bomb configurator. Again, partner portal, making it nice and easy for you. Range of tools there, very simple form. Um, you fill in, you know, post on the partner portal, as I said, updated regularly. So it's got all the latest access points into it. It's even got the new XV22T in it. Uh, supports all of the Wi-Fi 6 access points in CN Matrix. So, yeah, but again, it is MSR pre pricing. So go to Matt and uh, Matt will do you up a partner quote. Deal registration is also essential for partners, uh, so you get the best possible price. So with this here, the Wi-Fi, uh, the bomb configurator, you just put in new installation, old installation, what management platform you'd like. Uh, if you want to add EasyPass with education customers, EasyPass is included. Uh, application control, if you want to add switches for your power sources, rather than using standard PoE switches, that's another great way of doing it. Add all of your access points and then go through and it'll give you your bill of materials, which you can then send off to Mac to request a quote. TTO Profiler, it's probably one of the most invaluable tools there for partners. The link at the bottom, or again, you go to your channel portal, type in TCO Profiler and it'll bring it up to you. You log on, create a profile, and allows you to build competitive quotes against our opposition or in aiding you in selling the solution. Gives you the key cost benefit, key benefits, total cost of ownership. You can even go for this an advanced and a standard tab. The advanced tab goes through environmental impacts with uh, power consumption and things like that. 
supports all of our APs. We've got most of may all all of the major competitors there: Meraki, Cisco, River Ruckus Extreme. You can another tab there for other. So if you're competing against another product, you can put their pricing in, and it'll allow you to build a bond. Oh, back bond. Ah. With these, the TCO, the proposal that it spits out at the end does give you a great way of differentiating yourself from the competitors. Uh, it's great for adding into RFP processes or tender processes if you're involved in them. Um, and again, this is what it actually shows you. you know? um, most of the times when you're selling Wi-Fi, the opposition won't sell like for like. So if anyone's coming against our XB3, they'll quote something like the 505 or the 515 or rumor, which is a much lower spec AP because they know that that's the only thing they're going to be clo even close to pricing on. So always use this, you know, it gives you a great like for like comparison. So if you go in there for the top of the range AP like the MR55, you can see where the cost benefits there and you get more five gigahertz radios. Similarly with our XV22T against Meraki here, much better uh, price, total cost of ownership proposal there for you. Uh, learning, great portal full, absolutely packed full of things to learn how to use Cambium networks, how to sell, how to learn the products, demonstrate the products. Uh, you've got all of your different certifications there. And just a member for partners out there, Anyone completing the XMS Cloud Technical Certification or the XMS uh, Technical Certifications, limited of two per company, you do get a free XV2 and three years cloud with that. So at the end of the three years, you redo your certification, which you've got to, and then you can get whichever access point you have at that stage or the XV2. So great way to get product into your hands. Uh, we also have a great, on from the channel portal, a great NFR program. So if you want in-house equipment for your own office or demonstrating, NFR program provides very good, generous uh, discounts. Serious Trade Up program, uh, it's a great way for securing business from existing customers uh, to make sure they don't go elsewhere. Um, all the XR products except the XR320, it's not included in it. And also part of that is the XMSE, the enterprise on-premise to cloud. Uh, so if they upgrading their XMS on-prem, they automatically get uh, application to cloud. They do on one or three year. Now the big thing with the Trade Up program, it's, oh, no, it goes back, here it is. Most of the Xeris uh, XRAPs are going end of life by mid 2023 uh, and customers are aware of this. So they're already looking or they're looking to renew for at least another 12 months before the migration, but it's a great time to keep that customer, drive them into new product, new updated product, which has a lot of features as Roy said before, you might have Wi-Fi 6 APs, but an old fleet of laptops, they're still gonna get a performance gain by going to a Wi-Fi 6 AP. Here's all the APs in full. You won't find many of the XR7 series out there, uh, but you've got a lot of four radio and eight radio APs out there. And it's here where it gets a bit different, where we've got a lot of four radio APs. We don't just restrict you to one unit replacing that. So if you've got those, we'll allow a two for one and similarly on the eight radios. Uh, so total picture and the discount applies. As you can see, the discounts are pretty good. Uh, well, they're actually better than the education and hospitality vertical programs. Uh, great for you. And they're independent of your partner level, wherever you are. They do, however, require dual registration. And those of you who are familiar with the partner portal, dual registration is there. It's quite an easy tab to click on, input the details, and it gives you a little bit of or gives you a lot of security in the deal. Uh, it's not an eligible stack with other products and it's only on the hardware. With this, it's an honor system. The old, P, old APs are supposed to be taken out of service, but they will be taken out of service and put the new products in there. Uh, specialized vertical programs. I've had a few of you sign up to these and I'd encourage you to look at them if these are your particular verticals you're playing in. There's extra discounts and benefits for joining them. Again, on the web, click on it. There's a Easy application form, it's either one or one and a half pages, very simple. Submit it back to the email at the bottom of the form or send to me and I'll send it in for you. Uh, then you'll be approved and then you can become part of that vertical program. MSPs, uh, we've got a free 90 day trial of uh, CN Maestro X at the moment. Uh, also there for video surveillance with our CN Vision product, uh, hospitality, healthcare and education. 
So key verticals there for you. On the partner portal, the playbooks, we've got a lot of different playbooks in there for all these verticals uh, that are listed, or you can go and build your own playbook to, uh, as part of your business if you want there. This slide, Roy's already gone through it, but uh, why partner with us? All of these points I amplify, end-to-end -end wireless fabric, we're the only vendor that does it all. Uh, so with that, I'll hand back to Roy, and Roy will then hand over to Matt, I believe. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Kitty. I think that brings us right to the end of it, uh, and, and I really appreciate everyone staying on uh, until the end. Matt, no one dropped off. So we've had a great uh, turnout. Feel free to put any questions into the chat box um, or, or ask us uh, after time, but it's uh, really been a pleasure uh, spending this hour with you. Yep, there's, uh, there's a couple of questions that have come through. We do have 10 minutes. So um, does PBA also work with uh, CN Maestro? This might be one for Dave. Yes, 100% the question. Short, short answer is uh, yes, 100%. Awesome. There's another one I know it's been answered, but it might be a good one to throw out there. Is Wi-Fi 6 backwards compatible with Wi-Fi 5? Yes, it is. Uh, basically, it's part of the Wi-Fi standard. All products, it's mandated that they're backward compatible. Um, the benefit of Wi-Fi 6, even if you have an older fleet of products that are only Wi-Fi 5 or, God forbidden, some Wi-Fi 4 product there, it enhances the performance of those products for you. Uh, so give you much better SNR, better data throughput, um, better connectivity. So yes, they are backward compatible and that is mandated by the standard. Thanks, Pete. Uh, and one more uh, from Frank. Uh, is this recording going to be available? Yes, Frank, we'll, we'll make sure we get that out to you so you can share with your colleagues that weren't able to, let, to attend today. Uh, just check. Yep. If there's any more question, guys, we'll, we'll leave it open for about a minute. Um, do, do chuck them in. Yeah, just to add to that question around CN Maestro, we ran a, a, a webinar a couple of days ago um, where we recorded a demonstration of policy-based automation uh, on CN Maestro. So feel, feel free to reach out uh, to myself or Peter or David or Matt and uh, we'll send you a link uh, to the recording of that demonstration. It goes through the overall switching portfolio and demonstrates uh, PBA using CN Maestro. Uh, and David's available to do further demonstrations and uh, evaluations around PBA on XMS or CN Maestro. So feel free to reach out. Yeah, I think Dave's got a question, Dave Orville. Put his hand up. Uh, yep, there's a couple more that have come through. So does it support, so obviously talking about switches here from Trevor, uh, does it support automatic port configuration um, with the with in regards to PBA? Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, um, well, on XMS there are probably three or four fails that you can configure, but basically you can configure everything from VLANs to even just um, port labeling. So there are different different configurations that you can do on the switches. Again, on XMS and CN Master. Yep. Awesome. Okay, guys, if there's if there are any further questions, do feel free to reach out to the Cambium team at Blue Chip or Roy, uh, Peter and David. Uh, with that, um, my marketing team is telling me that uh, the Uber Eats vouchers have been distributed. So uh, hope you guys uh, enjoy your lunch. Thanks for attending. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. All the best.